Hello everyone, welcome back to the Matt Vidpro AI YouTube channel. I want to address this right off the bat. Yes, my voice does not sound as good as it normally does. I've had a cold for about a week now and I'm slowly recovering, but hey, I'm here to deliver the AI news regardless. Some highlights that I personally find exciting from today's video would be the fact that we're seeing a brand new type of AI model that I've never seen before and you can actually test it for yourself. Midge Journey is actually making some moves as well by launching a mobile app in a huge website update and without a doubt the best autonomous AI agent just got an update. So let's go ahead and jump right into this stuff. First things first, OpenAI has officially launched Dolly 3 all across ChatGPT+. Plus. So if you're paying for that $20 a month subscription, your subscription just got even more valuable. Obviously, we all know about Dolly 3 at this point. It is, at least in my opinion, the best AI image generator that we've ever seen to date. It can do a lot. And what's actually really great about this update is that it also came with the fact that now Dolly 3 is officially available on your phone through the ChatGPT app. So it's a really easy place to generate all of your Dolly 3 imagery. The one downside to this that's very interesting is that actually it turns out that a lot of the community seems to think that this is not the best place to generate with Dolly 3 because inside of that ChatGPT interface, there's a lot more censorship and things that are blocked. Like it won't do any famous characters or anything no Mario, no Sonic, unless you jailbreak it. Even though the underlying Dolly 3 model is very much capable of generating all of those things. Most of the strong core Dolly 3 generating AI community likes to generate inside of Microsoft Bing Create because while it still has a lot of restrictions, they are less in comparison to the ChatGPT interface. Still, I think for beginners, this is absolutely the easiest place to learn how to generate AI art and have fun with this creative machine. When Dolly 3 first launched, a lot of people thought it would not be able to compete with Midjourney. Midjourney has been seen as this holy grail king up until Dolly 3 really just dethroned it, to be honest. So what's Midjourney doing to stay up to date with this, to really compete? Well, let's take a look. Brand new upscalers being released to Midjourney, which is actually a pretty big deal, I think. They've got new 2x and 4x upscalers that are live on Midjourney. And remember, the only way to generate with Midjourney has classically been through Discord, which kind of stinks. But the first Midjourney app actually has been released. So more on that later. But they say they're taking their GPUs to their limits to let you explore at 16 megapixels. So we real photograph size and thus far guys I have to say I think it's pretty darn good so right here I've generated a close-up of a cat and I gotta say the detail is very much impressive I will say when you zoom in it definitely doesn't have the same detail quality as a real photo obviously when you zoom out it looks very much like a real photo I think it did a pretty good job at making these individual little hairs but I don't think those hairs are necessarily too scale so to speak. As an example, like you can see the individual hairs on the cat's face when you zoom out, but when you zoom in, we see those same hairs are actually made up of even more little hairs. So I wouldn't say it's very accurate. I would say it's more just a detail enhancer. It looks natural. It looks good. And I think it's very much serviceable. And I would much rather take something like this over just having a 1024 by 1024 base image, such as you get with the likes of Dolly 3. I think that the new upscaling looks a little bit better on art such as this, where there's more hard lines. Although, as you can see, it does struggle to render background details out sometimes. And this is possibly one of the better upscales that I've seen come from this thing. We've got a photo of a sliced lemon here. When we zoom in to the bubbles, it really does look quite good. Very realistic. Lots of nice detail in there. What I would love for Midjourney to do is is to actually allow us to use the upscaler on any photo we choose. So photos we actually take ourselves, 
as well as maybe Dolly 3 generations? I don't know, that's just an idea that I have. When the full Midjourney website is released, we will have to see what features await us. And yes, Midjourney also launched a new website redesign that's currently in beta. As Nick St. Pierre on Twitter points out, it's actually really fast, meaning it loads images much quicker than the old website, and the overall browsing experience is a lot better. Classically, the Midjourney website has been pretty garbage, but it looks like they are fixing things. With this new redesign, a lot of people are expecting you to actually be able to generate on the website, but that is not out in this new beta site yet. To get access to this new Midjourney site, you need to at least have 1,000 generations under your account's belt, but this is not nearly the most interesting thing that Midjourney has done as of late. I don't know why no one's talking about this, but Midjourney actually developed their first mobile app that you can download for iOS and Android. People probably just don't know about this because it's not directly called Midjourney, but it absolutely is by the people who made Midjourney and another company. It's called Niji Journey. As Dogen Earl on Twitter points out, this is a great opportunity for us to see Midjourney's design plans for their overall Midjourney mobile app. Now this Niji Journey app, it's really positioned as an AI anime generator, but this company Spellbrush has been working with Midjourney to create this AI anime generator, and you can actually generate regular Midjourney images inside of the Niji Journey app. Here's what it actually looks like inside of the app. As you can see, there's actually a live consistent generation where you can see all of the images that the community is generating in real time. Very interesting. Kind of good to help you get uh, fresh ideas into your brain of what to generate next. But of course, there's the Imagine where you can type in all of your prompts, you can upload images to do image to image. Overall, it's pretty cool. I like the focus on community and live generation, kind of making it more like a social media platform, I think at least is Midjourney's best bet at survival in this Dolly 3 landscape, unless they can really produce a phenomenal AI art generator. No doubt in my mind that the Midjourney app is going to be very similar to this, and hopefully we won't have to generate inside of Discord for much longer. AK, which by the way is a phenomenal AI account here on Twitter, definitely follow them for the latest updates in the world of AI in regards to open source stuff, is showing off a new AI called Salmon, which is a speech audio language music open neural network. It's got a free demo that's out for us to try today. This thing essentially is an audio to text generator. It can analyze audio in the same way that GPT for vision and chat GPT can analyze photos. So so this thing can hear. You can also run it locally on your own machine, it's open source stuff. So for example, if you upload a audio file that has gunshots in the background, this thing can say based on the background sound, it seems like the speaker is in a war zone or combat situation. The sound of gunfire and explosions can be heard in the background. The speaker is asking if the listener can guess where they are. So that's the other thing too. This thing can understand speech quite well, which we've seen AI models that can do speech recognition. OpenAI has some really good ones, but this one can do more than just speech. It can hear any sound that you throw at it, making it very versatile. The technology is slowly being developed for an AI bot that has all of the same senses as a human. We've got Vision GPT-4V, this for actual hearing. And of course, those underlying large language models that really back up all all of this, the understanding portion. And we've also got some duck sounds in the background. Based on the audio, write a story in detail. Your story should be highly related to the audio. I love to see new advancements in the AI world, brand new stuff like this. And this, to me, was the coolest part here. You can actually upload a piece of music. In this example, it was a piano and vocal piece. And it will be able to give you some creative response based off of that audio, just like a human, a, an opinion, saying this is a beautiful piano and vocal vocal piece. The piano plays a simple melody while the female vocalist sings in high register. Some actual knowledge on audio stuff. The atmosphere is romantic and dreamy, giving us some interpretive emotions. The piece has a soft and mellow feel to it. The piece could be used in a romantic movie scene or as a lullaby, giving us real-world use cases for the audio. Guys, I just love stuff like this. AI is literally gaining new abilities every single day. 
And it'll be really interesting, I think, especially to see how companies actually begin to combine these different AI technologies together to solve problems in our real world. The implications here might not be immediately obvious, but here's an example for you. Picture someone who is deaf. They can't hear. This thing can hear for them and give them a description that is as accurate as possible. They don't have to rely on other people for that anymore. Oh, and look at this, guys. We've got a quick little tidbit from a new AI art generator. By the way, coming from me, if you ever wonder how many AI art generators are there, we've got Midjourney, Dolly 3, how many exist? Uh, the answer is literally hundreds. There are hundreds of different AI art generators, so I don't typically talk about ones that pop up that are new, but this one is pretty cool. It's PixArt Alpha, fast training of diffusion transformers for photorealistic text to image synthesis. This one caught my eye for a few reasons. It's a transformer based text to image diffusion model nothing too special there, but the image generation quality is competitive with state-of-the-art examples such as Google's Imogen, SDXL, or even Midjourney. And the training speed of this, here's the key thing, surpasses existing large-scale text-to-image models. This thing can train in 10% of the time it took to train stable diffusion. So it's about 10 times easier to train one of these models versus existing methods. Potentially, we'll see a future where you at home can actually make your own AI image generation model. You can see some of the image generation examples. This is a very good model. It's very efficient, very clear, cohesive, coherent results with lots of beauty and fidelity, competitive with SDXL and Midjourney. This will be open source as well, so this is only going to further overall AI image generation development, and they plan to co-release the code and weights very soon. Now, to the average AI enthusiast, this might not be a big deal, but you gotta look a little bit closer here. The reason a lot of these new developments take time is money, of course. Training this AI art model saved nearly $300,000 in time. It only cost them $26,000 to train. Being able to train your models 10 times faster means that you, viewer at home, can get your new AI models 10 times faster, potentially. Oh, and by the way, there does appear to be an online demo, although I couldn't really figure out how to get it to work, so... If one of you figure this one out, please let me know in my Discord server or in the comments below. So I've been following this one for quite some time now. Matt Schumer, who is the CEO of HyperWrite, their company has been working on this AI assistant that is fully autonomous and can complete tasks for you, and it's slowly getting better and better. It just got a new update that makes it very cohesive. You can use it super easily and it also now will cite sources. So take a look at this little demo. We start off with our prompt to the AI. I'm currently in New York City. Can you search for some good Italian restaurants that I would like? The AI begins to do some thinking and it gives us a basic GPT style answer. A list of five restaurants, they're probably pretty good. Now here's where it gets real guys. This is where the, the rubber really meets the road. Mind blown. We then ask it, make a reservation for two tonight at 7.45 p.m. on open table at this specific restaurant and then provides the info. And the AI magic begins. It begins to process and think and it's going to give itself instructions, navigate to open table, go and find the reservation thing and actually fill in all of the information for you. It has the ability to go here and just do all the work. As you can see, it literally goes in there, plops the name in, the email, the phone number, and you're good to go. You now have a reservation in your name all done by the AI assistant. And then it gives you, here's your link to your reservation. It's all done, sir. By far one of the most useful AIs to date. And I'm surprised that this one hasn't caught on more, especially because you can try it for completely free. As Matt Schumer states, personal assistant combines everything they've built to create the single most capable assistant on the planet. We've got another example of the assistant writing a well-researched marketing email and sending it. Not just assisting with tasks, completing the full task for you. Gets its prompt to write the marketing email, even goes ahead to cite specific sources, goes into your email app and writes the email and sends it. It's definitely a very capable large language model operating under the hood as well because it can actually 
actually tally things out just like chat GPT does all while being a fully autonomous assistant. So overall, it's just some really incredible technology. I'm really impressed with this new update and they really seem to be working on this quite quickly as you get a little update seemingly every week to this thing. I'll link it down below. It's definitely worth a try for yourself if you want a good mind blow. I've also done a few videos on this thing in the past, but as it updates more, I'm going to continue to cover it. And finally, Meta AI has shared some research that brings them closer to real-time decoding of image perception from brain activity. These are all just fancy words for we can read your mind. We can literally see what you see just by reading your brainwave patterns by utilizing AI. They've got this system called MEG that can decode the unfolding of visual representations in the brain. And as you can see, this thing's actually scary good. The participant is shown an image of a panda and they can decode it to a rough visualization of a fluffy animal. These images aren't identical, but they're close enough to give you a very good gist of what you're watching. Image shown of a man standing. You can see that the dimensions of the man are very correct. He's standing. It's a man every single time in all of these decoded outputs. And his head is cut off. You don't even see his face the whole time. Photo of some scientific equipment also comes out as some general equipment. Maybe not that scientific, but still in the same category. And we've got a photo of a cheetah as well being decoded into another fluffy animal. And same goes for an insect, although a lot of times it seems to be getting birds and underwater bugs as well. But definitely something that, you know, is very small. I think the horse decoded quite well. Probably one of the better decodings out there. And with fruit we definitely get some fruits, although are those maggots in the fruits? I really hope not because that's disgusting. I think you'll notice there's some pretty significant similarities in color as well, so it can definitely tell what color you're looking at. Oh, and by the way, these images were only viewed for one second by the participants, so that's how fast this thing can get a gist of what you looked at. Oh, and I thought this was pretty funny. This is the, the science being conducted. Look at this guy in this giant machine that's reading your brain waves. Not exactly the same thing of just holding a little device near someone's head, right? But still, it's pretty darn cool stuff. So guys, there is your AI news roundup for the day. Again, I'm very sorry about my voice. Hopefully it heals back up soon. I'll try to continue to keep you guys up to date with the latest and greatest in AI. Stay subscribed and thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.